So you guys saw that video I already made a couple days ago talking about um, how the devil destroys chosen ones. And uh, there's another thing I want to show you guys. I'm walking past here again and it just popped up in my mind because this is so real, bro. Like before I get out with the message, the spiritual warfare that takes place, okay? Whenever you're about to level up, there's going to be five devils. Uh, the, the stronger the level up is, whatever, the bigger the blessing is, the more devils are going to manifest, okay? So there's five devils and they're waiting for you at that wall and they don't want you to pass. They don't want you to pass it. And the more closer you go to it, they're watching you because the wicked watch the righteous. They're watching. They're, and it's Satan's army versus God's army. I'm telling you this is how it is. And before you pass up that barrier, there's going to be five, ten devils attacking you. This is how it is. And if you, if you, just, if you do destroy those devils in the spiritual realm, okay, through fasting and prayer, through your obedience, you're going to level up. Okay, I'm telling you all, bro. This, that, I, I might make like ten videos how it is. And once you get past it, you continue on that straight and narrow, bro. So before I get on with the message, let me go back to my intro. <laughs> Peace and blessings, man. Peace and blessings is Mark the Message. We're back with another video. Woo! We're feeling good. We're feeling great. Man, it's a beautiful day in California today. In nature. You know, it's, a, it's good to get off, get out of the city, spend some time in nature, uh, meditate, just, you know, feel the air. You know, the simple things in life. Seems like what the Matrix tries to do is tries to push us to be in the city and to be on our phones all day and technology but you know even though i am making this video on my phone but at least i'm preaching the word right but anyways let's greet the people what's up jacqueline what's up adrian what's up bro what's up taba ben yeah what up bro uh you near garden california i don't know i think that's in socal no i'm in norcal i'm in the bay area uh what's up kenny davis what's up bro he said what's good my locks brother yeah i'm about to get my retwist in a bit what up, Jake? What up, Faith? What up, Cartel Bread? Fire coming from the Spirit and coming. All praise the Most High. Yes, all praise the Most High. Get the likes up. Yeah, get the likes up, guys. Hit the like button. What's up, Daughter of the King? What's up? What up? What up, Xavier? Robert Wood? All y'all in the building. Finally caught a live notification. That's what's up. What's up, Val? Glad to see you in here, bro. What up, everyone? I can't say what's up to everyone. It's like over 100 people, man. But, man, it's all love, man. All love. All love. Uh, Someone must have a little super chat super early. What's up? All this to see athletic. Thank you for the super chat, bro. Uh, do you plan on living in Cali for good? Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Definitely not. What's up? What's up, uh, Daisy? I haven't seen you in a minute. What's up? Actually, let me make you a moderator on this channel. Yeah, because there's this been a lot of trolls lately. So, you know, when you're preaching hellfire, Satan's going to send his trolls to try to distract the message. But anyways, let's get on with the video, man. Y'all see the title. It ignored Bible verse. Okay, the Bible says in Ezekiel, God sent Ezekiel to send the message to this people. God is sending me to this video to send the message to this people. Okay, God told Ezekiel to warn the people. Uh, in, in the book of Ezekiel, I think it's in uh, chapter 33, it says that if you don't warn the wicked of their sin, uh, your the blood will require on your hand. So God calls us to expose sin, to warn the wicked of their their error, their, their ways. Okay. Uh, and if you don't, you're going to be held accountable. And the reason why I'm making this video, right? Because I just made a community post on my other channel talking about adultery, right? And there was a whole bunch of people saying, oh, Mark, you should, you should preach more love, more unity, more Jesus. Like, like I don't already preach that. And it made me realize that because I just have, I have a daughter, right? She's, she's about to be three months old in about a week. And she can't eat milk. Uh, she can't eat meat. You know, ba newborn babies can't eat meat. They can only eat, drink milk. And it made me realize a lot of these Christians, they're still on the milk, which is okay. I was once on the milk. Okay, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But when someone's giving people the, the meat, don't be the stumbling block upon them and tell them don't 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 expose sin. Don't tell people about adultery. Just preach love. Just preach love. And that's what the Bible says. It warns us in two Timothy, chapter four, verse three to four, that people will go into uh, teachers that will tell them everything they want to hear, you know, just to preach love, love, love. And don't get it wrong, because God is love. The Bible even says, this is, for this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. How come those who, those Christians who only want to hear about love, how come you're not telling people about the commandments? Because Christ says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So how come people who want to just preach on love, they're not, they're not telling you about the commandments? So they, they just want you, they want that feel good message. You know, they want to feel comfortable in their sins. But now nah, God's using me to, to and using my vessel to tell you the truth about certain sins that will lead you to hell. Okay. And that is real love. When you tell people 
about, you know, certain sins that, you know, because the Bible, I don't have blood on my hands. I already warned people. I already told people about uh, Corinthians chapter 1 to 6 to 9. Uh, Gen uh, Galatians chapter 5 verse 5 19 to 21. So I I did my part. Look at the look at this man. This is a beautiful day This is a beautiful day, man. Wow. God is good. Whenever I see this guys I just think of God the creator the creator of all things man the simple things in life But yeah, man You know, you had a whole bunch of people like oh mark you gotta preach more on love preach more on unity And it's just like isn't that love to save someone? That that would be on their way to the wrong path on the broad wide gate. Wouldn't that be love? So what does love to people like like what's your definition of love because everyone has their own different de different definition And I'm gonna enjoy this view real quick guys because this is crazy man. Look at the Sun reflecting on the on the lake Like I'm telling you the simple things man the simple things in life Beautiful man But yeah, so that's what I don't have no blood on my hands. I, I play my part now, of course, I'm not going to just, you know, that's all I warn them and just that's it. You know, of course not. But are you warning your people? Are you are you warning your friends and family members or your girlfriend, your boyfriend, uh, your wife, your husband, your children? Or are you afraid of what comes with speaking the truth? What does the Bible say to those who speak the truth? You'll be you'll, you'll have many enemies. Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Galatians chapter four, verse 16. Okay, so yes, when you speak truth, you'll make enemies. I made a I made a post, a community post on my other channel, talking about adultery and, and the dangers thereof. Oh, just preach love, just you know, preach Jesus. Like, bro, isn't that what Jesus says? Repent or perish. So, like I said, that all like if you if you're if you're subscribed to my channel, just if, just for that feel good message to to, to have your uh, ears tickled because that's all the people you listen to. This is not the channel for you, bro. If you just want the milk and not the meat, it, it, don't, this is not for me, bro. If you like these churches that just tickle your ears, go to them. Don't don't watch my channel, bro, because I'm not doing that. God's not using my vessel to do that. It's like all these other pastors and preachers and content creators. Not all of them, of course. There's other brothers who, you know, who speak the truth. But for the most part, they all just you know leading you astray from that feel good message. You know, once saved, always saved. You know that feel good. They don't want. They're not telling you to repent. They're not telling you to be obedient. And, but y'all like that though. Y'all, 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 y'all support those people. Y'all rather have someone who's gonna tell you everything you want to hear. But hey, the Bible told us this would happen. So we clearly see that we are living in the end times. Someone says that's new age Christianity for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a new age Christianity. You're absolutely right. The Bible talks about that in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. Many people will take heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Okay? Doctrines of devils. It's not just talking about people of other faith you know it's also talking about people of the christianity faith right people who confess to believe in jesus they're going to give heat he to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils we're seeing that today i'm seeing it i don't know about everyone else but i'm i can only speak for myself but i'm seeing it and i'm going to keep letting y'all know man it is not worth it is not worth listening to a message that's just gonna it's not gonna convict you it's not gonna tell you what you're doing wrong like i want to i want to when i listen to someone on youtube right Either I want to learn something, some learn some knowledge, or maybe like I get convicted of something that I'm doing that's gonna lead me to the wrong path. Like I want to hear that type of message, bro. Like that's a real man. To me, that's a real man. Like someone who's preaching like that. Yeah, like, I actually have respect for that person. I leave them a cash app. I leave them a super chat because I know that many people don't support those people. Because like I said, you would rather support those who are gonna tickle your ears. Okay, so narrow is the way, absolutely. Okay, so I want to just warn you guys with that real quick. That's in Ezekiel. That always keep in mind that whenever you're doing the right thing whenever god is calling you to expose certain things and to preach them you know to preach the message to preach the gospel the real gospel not you know the, the picking and choosing what verses to follow not that and you know god's convicting you to warn someone don't worry about the backlash that comes with it and yes there will be backlash for most people uh there will be because god may be using you to warn someone that's on the wrong path that's on that broad, wide gate, which leads to destruction. And yes, if you warn them, they might cast a stone at you. Uh, they might call you judgmental. Oh, you're so religious, you know, whatever the case may be. But hey, as long and you're going to get a reward from that. Best believe when you're obedient to God, when God's calling you to do something, even though it might come with hate. Because remember, God called Jesus to do what he did. And look what they, look what, what they did to him. OK, but look what happened. Look at the rewards he got. OK, dominion over this whole entire earth. OK. That's what God gave Christ. So, yes, you're going to get backlash, but remember, there's always a reward 
for those who sow righteousness. There's always a reward for those who follow God. Even Christ says that in my, in my Father's house in heaven, there's many mansions prepared for you. So there's a reward for obeying God. But like I said, most people would rather take heed to seducing spirits, have itching ears, be told everything they want to hear. And that's just the, the times we're living in. And yes, and yes, I gotta let you guys know this all the time because people are like, oh, Mark, even your family? Yes. That's why Christ told people that if you love your father and mother more than me, you are not worthy of Christ. That is what the Bible says. Okay, it says that if any man does not deny himself and pick up his cross daily, he cannot be my disciple. Okay, so this, this walk is not easy. And that's why many people are not really Christians. Hey, most people who say they are, you know a tree by its fruits, okay? Are they living their life an example of Christ? Because the Bible says that any man have not the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him. Romans chapter eight, verse nine. So you gotta really ask yourself, am I really walking this walk? Or am I just, you know, conforming to this world? You know, ask yourself that. That's what the Bible says is too, to examine yourself daily. How is Jesus Christ in you except you be reprobates? Okay, except you be reprobates. What's a reprobate? People ask me this all the time. It's in Romans chapter one, verse 28 to 32. But a reprobate of mind is pretty much someone who feeds off of sin. That's pretty much what it is. And they attack those. They call those people crazy and weird for people who actually expose it and demonize those. That's what a reprobate of mind does. Okay, always keep that in mind. Remember, read Romans chapter one, verse 28 to 32. Everyone should read that. Thank you so much for the super chat. C Carter says, hey, Mark, this is my first time live. Your video on seven signs. Someone is evil. Help me get away from a narcissist. Praise God. That's what's up. Glad to help you. And I'm glad you took key to the message. God bless you. Thank you so much. Uh, Jordan, man, number one supporter, bro. For real. Thank you for the super chat. Says, let's go. All praise the most high God for this wisdom. Stay motivated for the truth, people. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, bro. I appreciate you, man. Someone says, say no to narcissists. Yeah, you don't want to. Uh, people, when people talk about narcissists, like, like the videos y'all watch, they don't really talk about it on a spiritual level, you know? And this is why, like, the people who you watch, you want to make sure to bring some spirituality to the message. Now, not that new age stuff. I'm talking about Holy Spirit, discernment, godly wisdom, and knowledge. I'm not talking about that new age stuff. So let me make this very clear because everyone who says they're, they're spiritual or spirituality, a lot of those people are witches, wizards, warlocks. Okay. So I make that very clear. Just because someone says they're spiritual doesn't mean they follow God. Seducing spirits, that's the new age stuff. A lot of people who are spiritual of this world, you know, the evil eye, uh, that, that hand sign, you know, that, the hand sign and the weird stuff, bro. All that stuff is weird. Demonic tarot cards, horoscopes, astrology, all weird, bro. Don't, don't fall into that snare. Okay. But, um, you know, so I had to make that very clear. When I talk about spiritual stuff, I'm not talking about that new age stuff. Bro. I'm talking about we give our life to, to Jesus and follow him. And he gives us, this, uh, God gives us discernment so we can see all things. All right. That Holy Spirit, that's all this channel is about. So don't fall into the trap of the new age stuff. A lot of people who are on the milk, a lot of people who are simple minded, they, they fall into, uh, you know, different doctrines. You know, Romans chapter 16, verse 17 to 18. So don't be simple minded. Be led by wisdom. Be led by discernment. Always, always keep that in mind. But as I was saying with the narcissist, right? It's a spirit behind those people. It's, it's, it's a demonic spirit. I believe it's a, a spirit of Satan because Satan was the first narcissist. He was the first one. So anyone who's, op who's operating under that, those traits is under is operating under a, a devilish spirit. And uh, the devil can use those people too. So yes, get rid of those people. And if you keep on attracting the narcissist, I speak on this too, because we always hold people accountable on this channel. If you're always attracting narcissists, relationships, friends, and stuff like that. Now, if, you, now if it's family, obviously it doesn't count. But if it's always a friend or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, or you just happen to keep on attracting them, the Bible says that a wicked man is given over to a wicked woman. Okay, so that means that you also have traits in you too, just like that same person you attracted. You also have a similar spirit to that, that person too as well. Okay, I'm not with that whole, uh, you're sleeping with someone, that's your boyfriend, your girlfriend. And... He's a devil. He's an evil person, and you're and you're just like the angel. I don't I don't believe that. I don't believe that because when I used to attract narcissist people, I was once like that too. Okay, thank God I was delivered from that, and you know we keep it moving. We take accountable accountability, and we learn and grow from it, and we change, we repent. If you keep on attracting those people. That means something's wrong with you, bro. Straight up. And a lot of y'all, y'all don't y'all don't take accountability. I don't know why. Because when you take your, when you hold yourself accountable, you're gonna grow as a person. You're gonna see the error in your ways, and you know, may, you know, maybe I shouldn't start doing this uh, as much. Maybe I shouldn't start wearing a face full of makeup as much. 
you know, maybe I shouldn't start, uh, I should stop smoking. Maybe I should stop living in fornication so I could stop tracking the wrong people. And maybe I could actually attract a husband. Maybe I could get married. Maybe, you know, maybe if I hold myself accountable, but many people are not going to do that. They're going to find people. They're going to find people to play the victim. Don't do that, guys. Don't do that. Don't do that. Uh, children of God should not be sleeping around with a boyfriend or a girlfriend, but that's my opinion. You know, that's that's the truth. You know, that's the, I, I agree 100% with that, man. Get married, get a husband, get a wife. Simple. Like, what, what's so hard? And uh, you got to understand that as a woman, if you just sleep around with many men, your value just goes down and down. You know, you now have soul ties with all those men and you wonder why you're angry all the time. You wonder why you're depressed. It's because all those spirits that you slept with are now on you. The person who becomes one with the harlot, that's a, that, so that Bible that Bible verse confirms that their soul ties are real. Okay, sex is not what they taught us to be. That you could be sex, sexually liberated, and you could be free, and you could sleep around with any, anyone with no consequence. Not just like the diseases, you know, that comes with it too, you know. But also, you becoming one with somebody, and that's for life, you know. Unless you get delivered, you know that, you know, unless you get, which most people don't. Most people say they're born again and this and that, but they're still the same person. And what Christ says, you know a tree by its fruits. So don't be sleeping around with everybody. Exactly. I agree 100%. I agree 100%. Accountability, repentance, which a closer relationship with the most high. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. A repentance lifestyle is something that we should all strive for. Having a, re a repented heart and living a repented lifestyle because we all fall short. And we all make mistakes and that's what repentance is for that's what the blood of jesus is for now we don't abuse it because the bible says uh shall we sin because grace uh, be abound god forbid so we don't abuse the spirit of grace but we're not going to just say oh you know once saved always say let me just live in fornication like that's that's a reprobated mind we don't want to fall into that snare I'm glad I came into the truth while I was young. This world is so wicked and I feel dumb for following it for the time I did. You know, we all once followed uh, the world. You know, Ephesians chapter two, verse one to, th to three. It says that those who, um, the children of disobedience, Satan works to them. The children of disobedience, Satan works to them. Yes, that is the Bible. As I think it says that two times in the, in the New Testament. Satan works to the children of disobedience. So yes, he always keep that in mind. And yes, I uh, once was in the world too. You know, I was lost too. We were all once lost. That's why God sent his son, Jesus, to save us. So, um, and the Bible even says that through you being a fool, you gain wisdom. So me being in the world, me doing a lot of foolish things, I actually gain a lot of wisdom through it. Now, there are people who don't learn from their mistakes, so they don't gain wisdom. They just continue being a fool. And they use that Bible verse to say, okay, I can just be a fool for the rest of my life. Like, no. Like, you got to be tired. Like, eventually, you got to be tired of doing foolish stuff because you know there's a consequence in all sins. Like, yes, we could repent. God gives us grace, but you still got to deal with the consequence because the Bible says that he who sows his flesh shall reap corruption. Okay. Yes, we could repent, you know, maybe do some fasting, some praying, and God will, you know, give us grace if we truly turn away from it. But if you are um, thinking that there's no consequences for your sins, you're deceived. Galatians chapter seven, uh, Galatians chapter six, verse seven to nine says, for he who sows his flesh shall reap corruption, but he who sows his spirit shall reap life everlasting. So that means that you're gonna reap the blessings walking in the spirit so you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, like I said, if you do fall short, yes, we're still gonna have to reap the consequences depending on what it is, but we have the blood of Jesus to wash us from all our sins. And it's funny how people say, oh, Mark doesn't preach Jesus. What, man, these rep, <laughs> I'm telling you, these demons, man, when you're preaching hell file, fire, and you're preaching the truth, they're gonna to try to find something of you, you know, which is crazy, man, that, that's crazy. I prayed for wisdom when I was young and God opened my eyes. This walking isn't easy, guys, but great, but great comes to those who endure, absolutely. But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. That's the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 24 to 13. But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Okay. Everyone's saying that they're saved right now, but Hebrews chapter 6 verse 4 to 6 tells us that uh, There's gonna be people who fall away from God Okay, and there's gonna be so there's those same people who said that they're saved they're saved But the Bible warns us that there will be people who fall away from God It, it even says that they're the fool that returns to the vomit and it will be better for them to not to even know the way of righteousness That's in the book of Timothy Okay, so but that he that endures in the end 
the same shall be saved. Woo, I love that verse, man. Because that verse te teaches us that we got to keep on fighting. We got to fight this flesh. Okay, we got to fight the devil. You know, but m most importantly, it's, it's your flesh. Because most of the time, not all the time, but most of the time, it's you that makes a mistake. It's you that does wrong. It's you that sins. So we can't always be blaming the devil. We can't always be blaming demons. Now, yes, they're, they're warring against us. But we can't always be blaming those people, man. We gotta, we gotta be, we gotta hold ourselves accountable. Okay, you know, yeah, I make videos on devils, demons, so let me make this very clear too. Because they are warned against us, especially if you you are wanna repent from your sins, the devil, he's coming full force. So yes, we gotta be wise and understand that it's a spiritual warfare, but at the same time, most of the time, you're opening doors for Satan coming in your life through sin. Okay, let's make that very, you know, you're out here watching porn, you know, you're out here living that type of lifestyle, warm your lifestyle, and you think that everything's going to be perfectly fine because you're covered under grace. But you're opening doors for Satan to come in. So be wise, guys. Be wise, man. We don't want to abuse grace. Thank you so much, Jason, for the $50 super chat. God bless you, bro. Appreciate you, man. And there was another brother, or I think a sister, who left another $50 super chat. I can't see where it's at because the chat is moving super fast. But I appreciate you, man. I appreciate it. And if anyone else left a super chat, God bless you. I appreciate you. Mark, how long did you feel? How long did you wait? How long did you stay in isolation? Um, it's always a season for me. I think the long period where I was isolated for it was about like seven months. But it's all different for everybody else. You know, John, who wrote some books in the New Testament, he was isolated for I think two or three years. So it's different for everybody and always understand that when god has you in an isolation season or for a long period of time whatever the case may be you have a big call in your life i'm letting y'all know this right now letting y'all know the longer to me it was only seven months john i think it was it was like two three years okay when he when he when he was in prison so the longer it is the better so embrace it okay when i was isolated for seven months i actually read the entire i, I read the entire bible twice no more distractions i'm, tell, I'm telling you guys i was in that bible Man, I was in that Bible like six, seven hours a day, man. No joke. By myself. Studying to show myself approved. And see, now I understand why God had me in the isolation season. So now I can preach to you guys. I can tell you guys the truth. The truth of the Bible. Okay, if I didn't read the Bible, I wouldn't know what I would be talking about. I wouldn't know. Also, my testimonies too. And all that. So when God made me go through it, to these agents, to these, to these gang stalkers, these devils, children of Satan. Okay, it was all just a testimony so I could warn you guys. You know, the videos that I make on seven signs someone is a devil. All through, all through what I learned dealing with these demons. Okay, uh, seven signs someone is this and that. Just a testimony. And uh, it's not my testimony. It's other people in the Bible's testimony too. You know, we, we saw what happened to Joseph, what, what his own family did to him. We saw what happened to Delilah. Or sorry, we saw what happened to Samson through his, you know, so-called lover did to him. So it's all just a testimony so we can learn from it. We saw what happened to David when he committed adultery. We saw what happened to uh, Solomon when uh, he had many wives and there was, no there was nothing wrong with having many wives. The problem was that he was marrying women who served other gods, which led him astray. So a lot of people think that his problem was him having 700 wives and 300 concubines. That wasn't the issue. It was that he was marrying women who were serving other gods. And you know, they and he was in his sin nature, in his Adam nature. And wisdom departed from him because wisdom would have never allow him to do that. And he started, you know, worshiping other gods and doing all that simp stuff. Okay. What did Adam do? When he bowed down to Eve, he knew better. Adam wasn't deceived. He just wanted to please his wife. And that's that Adam nature. You know, I always talk about Eve. Let's talk about you Adams. Okay. Uh, bowing down to a woman, uh, subscribing to a woman's OnlyFans. I uh, try to buy a woman's love and loyalty. Um, you know, picking a woman over God. You know, being uh, that's idolatry. Picking and choosing a woman, serving her, obeying her, and not obeying God, not obeying Christ. Got to do better. That's the Adam nature. That's Adam, man. Thank you so much, Redingo Harris, for the super chat. Thank you, bro. I appreciate you, man. Should we have firearms as Christians? Well, the Bible says sell, sell your cloth to, to buy a sword. So I'm going to leave that scripture in the comments. So... That's up to you. I don't demonize those who own guns because if someone were to break in your house, how would you protect yourself? Okay. Now, of course, I understand there's a spiritual realm and there's laws in the spiritual realm and those who fear God will be protected. 
okay? And you know, there will be angels to protect you, but I don't put my trust in the gun. I don't put my trust in owning a weapon, but you know, I'm not gonna demonize those who own guns for lawfully reasons. They're all, the Bible even says to obey the laws of the land. So there is nothing wrong with owning a gun. If you have your own paperwork, nothing wrong with that. And I know that religious Christians are not gonna like that. The crazy thing is I don't even own a gun. So I'm not being biased or nothing like that, but I don't, I don't demonize those who own guns. And I live in California, the most liberal, liberal state in America. But I don't demonize those who own guns. If it's for law, uh, now if you're over here owning guns, being a thug, against a, then you know you're gonna reap what you sow. If you're putting your, if you're putting your trust in the sword, you shall perish by the sword. Okay, so I'm gonna make that very clear because I know the religious people they don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. Mark, I missed your video. I was wondering where you went. Yeah, I haven't made a, I haven't made a video on this channel in a minute. If you guys haven't been noticing, I've been uploading more shorts on my channel because. Uh, the attention span on um, on this generation is very low now. People don't have the t attention span to watch like a longer video, so I've been uploading like more like shorter videos. And shorts they don't really show up in the subscription feed, so people think I don't make videos no more. But yeah, if you go on my channel, click on the shorts on my other channel, Mark the Messenger. You guys are watching this on my live channel. But also, people are saying, "No, Mark, I want to catch you live at the notification bell. Subscribe to Mark the Messenger live." I have two channels, okay? I have two channels. Make sure you guys subscribe to that channel. I'll leave a link in the description. So yeah, you guys watching it live, you guys don't have to worry about that, but yeah. Uh, how did God bring you out of isolation? That is a great, great question. Uh, he started bringing me back with brothers, uh, like-minded brothers who I started hanging out with. Uh, that is, that's, a, that's a good thing, good question to ask for people who want to know. So that's how he broke me out of my isolation. Now it, it, it could be different for everybody else, but for me, uh, he started bringing me like, I mean, they came out and it's crazy because I needed them the most. Like, not that I need people, but, you know, it's always good to have someone there for you in a time of need. And God sent them at the perfect time. So, yeah, thank you, God, for that. I'm a man. So how do you tell if a woman is sent to you from God? This is why it's important to have discernment. So you could discern, you don't have to ask the content creator. You don't have to ask your pastor. You don't have to ask no one but yourself. And I, you know, I always preach on self-reliance too as well. You know, have the Holy Spirit so the Holy Spirit could tell you that because that's, now don't get it wrong. You know, God does send his, his prophets, his messengers, uh, his bishops, et cetera, et cetera, to, you know, teach you that. But I'm gonna teach you, bro, have the Holy Spirit because that's the number one thing to have. And the Holy Spirit will give you discernment to discern those who are in your life. To, and for you to discern a tr um, that the Bible says that a good tree can't bear bad fruit and a bad fruit can't bear uh, a good tree can't bear bad fruit and a bad uh, tree can't bear good fruit. So uh, be with them for a couple. I say be with someone for a couple seasons. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll know them. If you, have, if you have the Holy Spirit, you'll see people for who they are, no matter how religious they are, no matter how, how churchy they are. It doesn't matter, bro. Don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. You'll see someone, you'll know, so you'll know a tree by its roots. And the problem is a lot of people are simple minded, so they can't, you know, they believe anything they're told. So have the Holy Spirit. If you don't have the Holy Spirit, ask God for it. If you don't have the gift of discernment, ask God for it. And I 100% promise you, if you are willing to walk with Christ, he will give it to you 100%. Uh, were you getting attacked constantly by agents during your isolation? I get attacked by agents all the time, isolation or not, especially if you're doing the will of the Father. Satan doesn't like that. So, yeah, agents are always coming. The sermon can show you right away. Yes, absolutely. Take care, Mark. Refresh and catch you on the next one. If the next loves it. What's up, Alex G? What's up, Curtis? What's up, who I am, the blogger? Greatest gift that keeps the gift of the Holy Spirit. Yep. You shall know them by their fruits. What kind of lifestyle are they living? Yes, absolutely. I hate shorts. They're so addictive and a waste of time and memory retention. Yeah, that's true, man. But you know, most people, they, were, uh, they don't. I had someone tell me, not making this up. He was like, oh, Mark, you have dope videos, but I'm not watching a 15 minute video. It's like, okay, bro. <laughs> Thank you so much, Moon Man, for the super chat. Says, a week ago, I repented for being a lazy Christian. Now I am walking with Christ and trusting him. I am a weak in semen retention. 
now and I'm filled with the energy and I feel like myself again. The battle isn't over. That's what's up. Thank you for the super chat. Yes, all you brothers who are not dealing with a woman, let's say if you don't, you're not married or anything like that, your best, your best, your, your, own, I'm not gonna give you, your only option is see your attention. That's your, in these last days, that is your only option. Because let me tell you guys something. In the future coming near, within five, 10 years, you're gonna see men and women uh, have sex with the AI, have sex with robots. I'm telling you, y'all hear, y'all heard from it first. That's gonna be normalized. Or men are gonna, man and woman are gonna be so lustful, burned in their lust, as the scripture says, that they're gonna start having sex with robots. Okay, AI. You have smartphones, smart cars, smart TVs. Everything is smart, right? All these technologies, and best believe, guys, all these technologies, these phones, it's all created by fallen angels. The people, I'm not gonna say no names, okay? But some of these people who create these devices, guys, fallen angels, devils in human forms, okay? And I know this might sound crazy or weird to certain people. Uh, you know, the Bible says that in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, that the, the carnal man doesn't understand, the natural man doesn't understand the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So if you're spiritually discerned, you're not going to be able to understand most of my messages, but it's okay, because a seed has been planted. That's all that matters. It's okay. But yes, fallen angels, they create all these technologies. Funny how the iPhone logo has an Apple bin behind it, and the first, uh, the first iPhone, that product that sold was $666. Can't make this up, bro. Can't make this up. Crazy, man. I'm a girl and I've struggled with sexual sin for a while because I have been through a lot, but I haven't had sex yet and want to remain pure to my husband that God has for me. That's what's up. I like the ancient ways. That's what's up. Yeah, the Bible says to walk in the old path, the ancient ways, but many refuse to. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 16. Many people will refuse to. They'd rather stay in Babylon. They'd rather stay in the matrix, pretty much. They'd rather just stay in Satan's kingdom and live comfortable because that's what Satan wants you to do. He wants you to stay comfortable, comfortable in your sins. That's what he wants you to do. And they don't want, they don't want to walk the paths of Moses, Noah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Okay, they don't want to walk those paths. They would rather just stay in the matrix, conform to this modern day society, and just stay in the illusion. You know, because that's it's comfortable. You'll be, everyone will like you. Everyone will want to be friends with you. But the minute you start to speak the truth, or not even just speak the truth, the minute you want to walk in truth, now it's the issue. Now you're a threat. That's how it is, man. It's a crazy world we're living in. Crazy, demonic, satanic society we're living in. Where evil is good, evil is good, and good is evil. That is the days we're living in. All you people who are on the narrow path, you're going to be called evil. And all those people... Who are on the other path, they're going to be called good. It's crazy, man. The Bible says, woe to those. What does woe mean? Sorrow, there's destruction, anguish, the sword. It's coming to those people, man. Coming to those people. You people calling the good people evil and the evil people good. Sorrow and destruction. He that do evil hates the light. Yep, absolutely. Because those who do evil that hate the light, those who are in darkness that refuse to come into the light, it's because that their evilness will be exposed when they come into the light. And they don't want that. They don't, they don't, they don't want to see that. That's in, that's in John chapter 3, verse 16 to 21. Go read it. They would rather stay in darkness because the dark, when they come into the light, it's going to expose the darkness in them. It's going to have to, it's going to tell them to repent. It's going to tell them to, you know, you don't have to change, you know, repent. Man, they don't want that. These people don't want that, man. Make sure y'all smash the like button, man. If you made it this far, you got to be showing your support. It's 100% free to hit the like button. <laughs> but it's all good, though. It's all good, man. Someone says, do I dream a lot? Yes, I'm going to be making a video on dreams real soon. Uh, God willing. Man, my dreams lately, guys, have been crazy. I had a dream. Speaking of dreams, I had a dream. This was a couple days ago. That I was, I was in LA for whatever reason, and I was, uh, I think it was in the passenger seat. Someone was driving, and we were by the ocean, and I saw a huge wave. Like I'm telling, you, like, it was like, I was by the ocean, right? It was like up to all the way up to here, like a huge wave coming into the city, and I saw people were just being comfortable. Like people, were like I was like, why is no one panicking? Like why is no one, or at least like why is no one like trying to run away from it? Like everyone was just staying still. And I told the driver, I said, bro, drive, drive straight. And it felt so real, bro. It was a huge wave coming into the city. 
and everyone would everyone was just living a normal life now of course you had a, some abandoned houses and stuff like that but for the most part you had most people just comfortable remember that's what i said the devil wants you he wants you to be comfortable that's what he wants for your life for you to be comfortable for you to be ignorant and the bible says if any man be ignorant let him be ignorant but uh yeah man that was my dream and and let me tell you this, something too when you're smoking when you're smoking not just weed but just smoking in general all those drugs uh you can no longer dream okay i think that's there's, there's a spiritual reason behind it some people try to break it down like carnally like which it can, it can be kind of true to it that smoke smoking sim, um it stops you from dream. i forgot um i forgot what that name is for your in your brain which there, there could be some truth to that but um you know when you're out here opening those doors and not being sober when it comes to like smoking and stuff like that or like popping pills any type of drug any type of drug right you know you're not gonna be you're not, you're not gonna see the spiritual warfare taking place and that dream that i had guys when there was i'm telling you guys a huge wave bro now let's say the bottom of the ocean right there it was like all the way up to here i mean it was coming i'm like what the heck like and everyone was just walking in the street and standing still. so what did that dream show me what i believe it meant it means that all hell is about to break loose and people aren't prepared for it people aren't that's what that dream meant and remember joseph joseph had the gift of, and that was one of the gifts that i asked god for man i asked god so i got because I, I you know like i don't know about anyone else but for me like i like to like there's certain spiritual gifts that like i would love i could say out of everything i could ask for right i would ask god the gift of just seeing dreams like the meaning behind it like that was a cool that's a, like bro that's like a superpower bro like not in like a worldly type of way but like that's like a superpower man when you could, when you could dream and you can know what the dreams mean behind it like that's dope bro and uh yeah i've been having some crazy dreams lately man oh I, man man i have some crazy dreams and god will warn you in your dreams too now the devil could give you dreams like when you have a wet dream that's not of god when you're out here having sex in your dreams with like the succubus and incubus that is not that's not a dream of god so always discern who the dream is coming from okay uh always understand that okay especially your brothers who want semen retention and like you're on semen retention for three months everything's going good you know you everything you're chilling you're strong right you're not even thinking about that type of stuff no more porn is no longer in your mind masturbating that's dead you, that's, that's that's gone right and all of a sudden you have a wet dream no you have sex with the succubus or your sisters, you had sex with the incubus, right? That's not of God, man. So always understand that. Not every dream you have is of God. And Satan, he gives people false prophecies through the dreams. And they get on YouTube and they start sharing it with people. And uh, it's unfortunate that people have, people are simple-minded. And they can't discern a dream that's of Satan. And they watch these videos. Like you see all these rapture videos. The rapture's happening in 2020. The rapture's happening in 2019. But the rapture's not even biblical. But, you know, Satan gave him a dream, a false dream. Rapture's happening. There were so many videos that went viral back in 2020. I don't know if you guys remember, if you, any guys were in the truth back then. 2019. No, 2019. It was three years. Four, dang, 2019 is... This 2000, 2019 was four years ago. Wow. But yeah, back in 2019, there was a, a video that went viral. It had multi-million views where a girl was telling you that, that she had a dream that a rapture was coming in August 2019 or sometime around that. I think the video has been deleted now, but it has all these views and everyone was in the comments saying... You know, oh, amen, amen, hallelujah. You know, amen, amen, the Lord is coming. And yeah, the Lord is coming, but the Bible says that no man knows day or hour. So people weren't able to discern that she was not getting, receiving a, a dream of God. So Satan could give you dreams too. Um, but yeah, man, the Bible says, woe unto you who desire the day of the Lord. Yes, yes. Your Christian pastor ain't preaching that though. Woe unto you who desire the day of the Lord. Mark, what verse is that? You can go on Google and type in, woe unto you who desire the day of the Lord, KJV, and the verse will pop up. Now, if someone wants to leave that verse in the, uh, in the comments, go for it. Thank you so much, Caleb, for the super chat. I had a dream where I was, you were possessed by a demon and when speaking through me, trying to convince my mother to shoot me in the head, totally demonic, started praying immediately. Wow, bro. Yeah, man, that's, that's proof right there. That is 100% proof right there that not all dreams are from God. And uh, if you get if you get shot in your dreams, that's spiritual death. It's going to manifest in the physical realm. You might get in a car accident. Someone might actually shoot you. Uh, something will happen to you. So of you all know that right now. Uh, like I said, I'm going to be making a video on dreams. Everything God has showed me about dreams. And uh, wow, man. I had a crazy, a, a prophetic dream two, two weeks ago, and it came to pass three days later. 
Oh my gosh, man. This was a trip. It came to pass like live, bro. I'm like, wow, God to warn me through that dream. God warned me. And luckily, you know, luckily nothing happened, but man, like, man, thank you God for that, bro. Let me just tell y'all something, man. When you're anointed, when you're God's chosen one, the devil, he he really doesn't like that, bro. He really doesn't. So he's going to use people. Remember, a man's enemies will be in his own household. Christ even says, you'll be hated by all men for my name's sake. Okay, Christ says that you'll be hated by all men. Not some men, not a few men, but all men. All, all men will hate you for my name's sake. Are you hated by people? Ask yourself this. Do people hate you? Or are you loved? Does everyone praise you? Ask yourself that, man. Because when people hate me, I, I, I embrace it, man. I embrace it because I know that's what comes with. That's what comes with the crown, man. That's what comes with denying yourself daily and picking up your cross. That's what it comes with, getting those stones cast at you. When Christ was, you know, doing what he did, denying himself and picking up his cross, they had stones casted at him, you know, whipped him, chained him. Dang, man, bunch of demons, bro. Just demons using those people to do that. They were in darkness. So demons are going to do the same thing to you. Those who are in darkness, they're going to do the same thing to you. Try to attack your mind. Try to, try to plant seeds of confusion in you. Man, you know, you got to rebuke those thoughts. You got to rebuke all that, bro. Rebuke it all, man. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Always remember that. And your weapon in this spiritual warfare, your weapon against these demons and devils is the word of God, man. Because that's how Christ defeated Satan, through the word. When Satan was trying to tempt him, when Satan was trying to confuse him, okay, he, he, he attacked him back with the word, man. And you got to do the same thing too. You got to do the same thing too, man. Man, if, if you're rocking with this message, man, drop an amen, bro. Let me see. Who, drop an amen in the comments, bro. I want to see. No one left that verse of, uh, woe unto you who desire the day of the Lord. No one left that verse. Satan was in my dream as a beautiful angel. Then someone said, if you don't scream, you will die. Damn. Shoot, that's crazy. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Uh, Nala Bishop says, Amos chapter 5 verse 18 says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Yes. There's an next verse after that too, verse 19. But I think YouTube, you can only put a certain amount of, uh, you can only put a certain amount in the comments or whatever, so. But yeah, Satan will, you know, he will attack you in your dreams, man. If he can't get you in the physical realm, or maybe like, maybe he is attacking the physical realm, right? You know, maybe some, some troll on the internet or something like that. <laughs> or like, you know, if he can't attack you from the internet or the real life, then he's messing with you in your dreams, bro. This is an everyday battle, bro. Every single day, man. He when that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Thank you so much, Joseph uh, Colonel. Car 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 says, Amos chapter 5, verse 18, King James Version. Thank you so much. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To, to what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Absolutely. Because what did Christ say? He's coming back to bring a sword. What does that sword mean? Destruction. He's going to destroy the wicked. He's going to destroy the ungodly. He's going to destroy all the unbelievers. That's what he's coming to destroy. So that's why the Bible says, woe unto you who desire that day. When you're, when certain, and not just not saying all your family members, but when certain family members, friends, uh, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your wife, your husband, because remember what happened to Lot's wife? Okay, we all know what happened to her. When, you know, so you, maybe even your children, when they don't make it, there's, there's no light in that day. So woe unto you who desire the Lord. Remember, the way is narrow. Only if you find it. Only if you find it. Mark, I see Pharisees attacking you. Yeah, we're not worried about we're not we're not worried about them, man. We're not worried about them. They they attack Christ, so they do the same thing to me. We ain't worried about them. Keep on walking straight and narrow. All distractions, distractions of the enemy. From San Francisco, California. That's what's up, uh, Nina Sita. That's what's up. Shout out to the Bay Area. Smash that like button. Yes, thank you, daughter of the King. Dang, y'all having all these dreams. Y'all getting shot. Dang, you see. That's, that's telling y'all, bro. See, y'all look at the comments in here. People people saying that, man. Many of you are called, few are chosen. Yep, absolutely. Yep. yep. The people who are chosen, we're chosen to be obedient. We're chosen to deny ourselves daily and pick up, uh, pick up our cross, right? We're chosen to live a repentant lifestyle. We are chosen to follow Christ. The people who are called, but were not chosen, they rejected it. They didn't want to be obedient. They didn't want to be holy. Because the Bible says that without holiness and peace with all men, you will not see the Lord. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14. 
go ahead and leave that verse in the comments. But yeah, man, the sword of division. Yes, Christ is coming back to divide the, the sheep and the goats, the wheat and the tares, the children of God and the children of the saints. People are telling me this all the time. You know, Mark, you preach division. Well, Christ is coming back to bring division. Are you going to tell him the same thing too? Okay. The, my message is, is for the, uh, the wheat, not for the tares. Now, the tares, they watch too. The children of saying they, they watch Mark the messenger. Now, they, they're watching, you know, to slay me. Because like the, the Bible says the wicked watch the righteous and seek to slay him. So they're watching me for the wrong reasons. Just try to find some error in my message. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, bro. Don't want to watch all my videos. Don't want to hit the like button. Don't want to show no love. It is what it is. The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's a, there's a parable that Christ spoke. He talked about how uh, when, when they brought out the net, they got the fish, they threw away the bad ones, and they kept the good ones. So I'm going to leave that verse in the comments. So I'm going to leave that verse. And the people who are useless for the kingdom of God, put them, throw, throw them in the fire, for they could be burned with fire and brimstone. Ooh, this message, a lot of people... Your, your pastor at your church, he ain't, he ain't talking about this. So when, when I talk about it, I get demonized because you, you've been so programmed to get that ear tickling message and you hate me. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. You know, sometimes I ask God, you know, I only ask him this once. I said sometimes like, but I only, you know, sometimes I do think about this. Like, why didn't he just use these Pharisees? These, you know, so holy, so overly religious, overly zealous. Like, why did he choose me to do what I'm doing? You know, but hey, God saw something in me that I didn't even see in myself. So it is what it is. Just like the days of Noah, beware. Yes, absolutely. Someone said, what's the scripture? Uh, D, uh, D Melissa, I believe that's in Matthew. Um, damn, I know it's in Matthew for sure. When, he, when Christ spoke a parable, how they put an, uh, a net in the, uh, the put a net. He was speaking of, you put a net in the ocean, and when they catch a the fish, they, they keep the good ones, and they throw the bad ones away. So I'm going to leave that Bible. It's a, it's a long verse, but you might not be able to uh, leave it. Okay, there you go. Thank you so much, D. Uh, thanks. Thank you so much. God bless you. It says, Matthew chapter 13, verse 48. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into, into the vessels, but the bad cast away. There you go. There you go. Just think about like when I would throw a net out in the ocean, right? Now, this is a lake right here. But let's just say I was in the ocean. And I'll get like 10 fish, right? The, the ones that, the bad fish, there's no use for it. So I'll just throw it out. But the good ones, I'll keep. You see how Christ spoke in parables? Because people are simple-minded. They don't have wisdom. They don't have understanding. So he spoke to them in parables so they could understand better. That's a perfect parable, bro. Because I, I, I fished before. I know how it is to fish. And you get, you get a fish that's bad, you throw it out. But the good fish you keep, it's the same thing. The vessels of God and the vessels of the devil. Man. The vessels of the devils, go throw it away. You know, remember the, the Pharisees? Not all of them. But some of them were vessels of the devil. No matter how righteous they were, no matter how much they went to church, went to their, their camp, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. It did not matter. And see, it's good to know the word, but if you know the word and you don't apply it to your life, man, you just deceive yourself. Just like the scripture says. Don't just be hearers and not do doers uh, deceiving your own self. So you don't want to be like them. You don't want to know all these laws and all these commandments. And let's say, you know, you are practicing the law, right? But you have no love for your, your, your brother. You have no love for your sister. No love for your neighbor. Even though the Bible says that love is fulfilling the law. But you're out here, you know, acting like you're so, you know, so righteous, right? But you have no love for your neighbor. What a hypocrite, man. What a damn hypocrite, bro. I can't stand those type of people, man. Blinded with their pride. Blinded with the self-righteousness. Blinded with their arrogancy. Just church people, with, with, they don't, church people who don't have Christ in their life. That's a lot of people, man. It's a lot of people. And the Bible says, though my speech be rude, I am not lacking knowledge. Book of Corinthians. Though my speech be rude, I do not lack knowledge. Someone can leave that in the comments too. Remember, everything I say, guys, if you're like, Mark, show me, show me in the Bible where it says that. Uh, so all you have to do is go on Google, right? Type in, though my speech be rude, KJV, and that verse will pop up. So let's be, let's use our common sense. That's all you got to do. No offense. He chooses who the world sees as fools. Yep. What do you mean no offense? That's the truth. That's the Bible. So there's no, nothing to offend. <laughs> but yeah. Yep. God chooses the people who are, you know, people who the world sees as fools. And God chooses the people who are weak to confound the strong. That's how that's how God works. God is, he, he goes for the underdog. God roots for the underdog. That's how, that's how my father is. All you people who you love, you, you hate the most, 
for the wrong reasons, okay? For the wrong reasons. It's like how they hated Christ the most. Christ, God was working through him the most, man. So it is what it is. That's how he works. Thank you so much, Who I Am, the blogger, for becoming a member and leaving a cat, uh, super chat. Appreciate you, bro. In Matthew chapter 13, verse 30, burn the tears. Yeah. See the mustard seed can move mountains. Yep. Just got back from eating dinner. That's what's up, man. The division is taking place between the wheat and the tares. Yep, absolutely, man. Absolutely. So I said, damn, and someone left um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Uh, just remember I said, look up the verse. Though my speech be rude, I'm not lacking knowledge. Look up that verse. Look up that verse. So when, when Jesus was speaking, when Paul and all, all the prophets were speaking, they didn't have, you know, a fair, you know, beautiful speech. Nah. They had, they, were, they had a rude approach to it. Now, of course, use what I'm saying with wisdom. They weren't saying dropping F-bombs and B-bombs. But they were, you know, the Bible even says, all that might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasures of unrighteousness. Okay, All might be damned. Yes, damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasures in unrighteousness. Those who people who reject the truth, God is sending them a strong delusion. All might be damned. All might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasures in unrighteousness. Would you tell them, no, don't say damn, Jesus, or I think it was not, who was, I think it was Paul who wrote that. Paul, no, don't, don't say damn, don't, don't say that. See what I'm saying when you're overly religious, man? Just, you just completely re like, reject the message because you're overly religious, man. This is what I was telling you guys about, about, you know, avoid the people who are overly religious. Avoid them, man, I'm telling y'all, telling y'all, man. Brother, is there a chance you visit visit Europe to for spiritual warfare. What, what do you mean? Uh, but though I be rude in speech, yet not knowledge, but we have thoroughly made manifest all things among you. Yes, that's in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16. Thank you so much, Rachel. I appreciate you. And uh, that's why a lot of people don't like me on YouTube because uh, I don't I don't tickle their ears. But though my speech be rude, I am not lacking knowledge, you know? I don't give them that feel good message. They don't, they don't like to hear what I'm saying. And that's okay because my message is not for everybody. My message is for those who are chosen by God or those who are being called by God. Those who God rejected, those who God gave over to a reprobated mind, he, God gave you over to a reprobated mind. So what am I, what am I gonna do? God already, God already casted you away through a reprobated mind. What am I gonna do? So you gotta deal with the judgment of God and it is what it is. Not my, my issue, you know. You have, everyone has their own chance. Everyone has their own chance to walk with Christ, you know. Mark, how do you remember scriptures so easily? Um, like I said in the beginning of this video, you're probably just not joining, but I said that I will read the Bible for eight hours a day for months. And uh, now you don't have to, I, mean, I was kind of going a little bit too hard, but you know, when you love God, you really want to learn more about him. Not saying that you got to read the Bible eight hours. I'm not saying that because you got the simple minded people, but that's what I, that's how I remember the scripture so well. I read the Bible eight hours a day for months, eight hours a day. Think about the times where you play video games eight hours a day. Think about the times where you're chasing women eight hours a day, 20 hours a day. Or think about the times you're putting on makeup two, three hours a day. Think about the times where you're going to the gym two, three hours a day. Nothing wrong with going to the gym. So I just thought about, I was like, I did all these things, right? Watching porn, masturbating, just doing, destroy, destroying myself for hours a day. I could read my Bible for at least four or five hours a day. That's my mindset back then. It is, it is today. If I could destroy myself for, for hours a day and find no wrong with it, I could read my Bible for five hours a day. So that was my mindset. So that's how I remember the scripture so well. I studied to show myself approved. I didn't go, I didn't wait on a ch or church on Sundays to give me the word, to give me the Bible. I actually read it for myself. So that's how I remember the scripture so well. A lot of people ask me that too. Uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 12 says, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast away the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of the light. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, like I, I remember playing video games for eight, nine hours a day, bro. If I could do that, I could read my Bible for you. You know, that's just my mindset. That was just my mindset. It's all my all mindset, man. But yeah, man. What's up, Dre Redman? What's up, bro? I ain't seen you in a minute. What's up, bro? Tr telling someone the truth is the biggest form of love. Yes, that's that's true. Yep, that's true, man. 
I need to get me my Bible. Hey, uh, I need to get a Bible. Killeen, uh, message me. Hit me up. I'll get. I'll send you a Bible. So, uh, hit me up on my on my Instagram. I marked the messenger. Uh, uh, send me your uh, mailing uh, address, and I'll, and I'll send you over a Bible. But yeah, guys, pleasure building with you guys. This video will be on my main channel tomorrow, so if you join late, no problem. It'll be, my, be on my channel tomorrow. Make sure you guys subscribe to Mark the Messenger Live. And if you haven't already, make sure you guys like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this video on all social media platforms. You don't have to share this video if you guys are watching it live, because I'm going to be putting this on private and putting it on my main channel tomorrow. Love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.